Alright ladies and gentlemen, uh, kit mongers of all calibers, welcome back to the kit compendium. It's been a week, Chris. It's been a week. For those that are just watching this episode for the first time, because I know you're going to come back and watch it seven times. Oh, absolutely. This may have not been a week. This may have been only 24 hours, depending on what YouTube and Rumble and all those platforms decide to do to entertain you with their algorithm of epicness. That's fair. And if you've watched this more than once... Thank you. Well, I was going to say no apologies, but I mean, same, same. <laughs> so, uh, again, if you're just tuning in for the first time, the Kit Compendium, he was Army, I was Army, we're Canadian, we talk about gear, we are underfunded, under-equipped, but never outfought. That's right. And with that, we talk about gear, training, equipment, and things that we have always wished and hoped and dreamed that we could get our hands on. Yeah. And now as civvies... There's no grumpy old sergeant major like ourselves to tell us, no, you can't wear that because no. I didn't get to wear it as a private, right? That's right. <laughs> it's not sold in the kit shop. So. Right? <laughs> Sorry, our son. Yeah, because if it's sold in the kit shop, they don't care because they get their cut of it at the unit, right? Yeah. All right, moving forward. So, all right. Today, what do you have for an offering? So, today, from Condor, graciously supplied by Ripple Industries, we have the XO Plate Carrier. So Excellent. Exo play carrier is uh, essentially it's a gunner's vest. Okay. Um, just like everything, just like what we do, we tell you uh, the pros, the cons, uh, the price, and the rest is up to you. Yeah, we tell you what we found, what we've encountered. Right. And you get to decide with that information if it's valid and pertinent to you, which it probably is. And if you don't listen to us. Well, <laughs> it's on you. Yeah, or, or us, one of the two. And we are not, by any means, experts. No matter how fucking awesome you think we are. Anyway, so on to the XO. XO. Uh, I got to tell you, straight up, general terms, not a fan. Okay. Um, not a fan. But we'll still, we'll start with, we'll do the shit sandwich. We'll, okay. We'll start with the pros, we'll go to the cons, um, and then, and then we'll finish with a couple of pros. Okay. So, a pro of this much more robust than the plate carrier that we tried last week. Okay, um, yes, yeah. this is, so let's let's do this. Right. We're talking about pros. Mm -hmm. So when you say more robust, yeah, this has actually got a lot more real estate to it. It does. Okay, it so does. in the front, when we open it up. The cummerbund, pro. Oh, the cummerbund is very quick connect. Okay. Uh, you can get that on really, really quickly. If you wanted to attach a placard to this, uh, you could easily take some placards that exist with other systems and make it work on uh, on this XO. Okay. Uh, which, is, which is amazing. It's very decent. The other pro is if you need a little bit more armor, yeah. you can put soft armor in there. I was so excited. My voice cracked a little bit. I was like, <laughs> oh, armor. Soft. soft stuff. So you got um, soft ability in the front and rear. You do. Which can overlap depending on the girth of yourself. <laughs> yeah. And then the cover bun just cinches that right in. Right. The other advantage, since we're on the top of the armor, <clears throat> the pouches on the side of this. Okay. You can you can add armor into this, and uh, there is uh, there are armor pockets that are available. Um, so you can you can use this side pocket for almost anything you want for storing gear. Okay. For additional armor, magazine inserts, um, what have you, customize it to you. Yep. The, what works for you and for the mission that you're about to embark upon. Um, so it's a modular style, like I'd almost say modular. -ish. Quite, quite -esque. modular. -esque. -esque. Modular -esque. -esque. You're you're right. Modular esque. Okay. Um, the thing I didn't like about this cummerbund though is if ah uh, yes, you can just pull this cummerbund straight out. Yeah. So if you're trying to don this in a hurry. Um, you could potentially pull it right out. You could potentially pull that, that cummerbund straight out of you. Uh, and it does, even though the adjustments in the back, these are, I like these adjustments better than the last vest that we, we took a look at uh, because they're a little more. So previous robust. vest, yeah. Previous these are... vest. Yeah. This is, this is a nice, uh, a, a nice attachment feature for, for letting it out. But I mean, with the Velcro that's on the front of this, the Velcro that's on the cummerbund, you can actually make it very tight or loosen it off. Okay. Very quickly, depending on the clothes you're wearing and the environment that you're in. Yes. Downside is that this just pivots freely inside there. 100%. Okay. 
Okay. 100%. Now there is uh, one section that's got a little bit of flex to it. It does. Yeah. Oh, that's actually neat. Uh, how they've got the double strands. Yeah, with two different pieces of yeah. elastic in there. Yeah. So you know you could do your little like. No, if, 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 <laughs> you're, if you run it, run out of gym equipment because everybody is. Everybody's gone and used the uh, the axles or the yeah. coffee cans and filled them with concrete. Whatever you can get your hands on. Whatever you can get your hands on. Okay, so that is the cover bun. Right. We talked about the soft armor capabilities, the pouches. Yep. Let's talk about a negative. Okay, Let's go so negative here. Here's a negative. It's a big negative for all my uh, all my starlights out there. Um, the uh, starlights are, are what we call the medics. Um, what they're not going to like about this, the top of this comes right up to your neck. Yes. And with the soft armor in it, that's great. Without the soft armor in it, and anybody who goes to our Instagram, uh, the Kick Compendium, all one word on Instagram, you'll see- Shameless it, plug are right, right there. Uh, you'll see, I, I had this out, doing what I do with it. Um, mm -hmm. Part of my PT is uh, is to ruck and do ruck runs. Uh, took this out, and that plate that's in there is a 10 and a half by 12 plate. Yes. The training plate we have in there. And you can see how low that plate sits. So that, that plate should be sitting right here at your clavicle notch. And it definitely isn't. I tried to adjust it up as high as I could. Um, just no dice. No. I, you couldn't get it up uh, high enough. So the, the plate pocket that's inside, I think, is a little lackluster. Okay. I've even taken uh, ceramic plates that are a little... Uh, a little bigger and they don't they're not cheap. So you used our training plate that we've designed right. and other plates that are on the market. Absolutely. Okay. I've used other plates that are on the market and it's still so two different sets of plates um and it still sat too low. Like it, it ended up sitting right around here, probably about a couple of inches below the clavicle notch. So not really uh not really feeling that. It okay. doesn't make me feel too comfy. Um and then in the back it's the same problem with the, the plate pocket in the back. Okay. It sags pretty low, um, so your your plate isn't as high up as it should be in the back to offer you the protection for your vitals. No, when yeah. when I used it, I noticed that there was a bouncing point. There was a bouncing act. Yeah, in, in there, I'm yeah, trying to get this that. vest to sit, and yeah, and that is explained very much by where those plates are. So when we actually look inside, because that's what I know you're asking yourself. Like, well, guys, there's probably an adjustable what? system. Well, there is a bit of an adjustable system. As you can see, that there is an internal pocket for the plate. As you can see, our plate is at the very bottom of the actual pocket itself. Yeah. And there is no more up space to give it to, to move it higher up. No. The actual design is that way. So the pocket for that pad, uh, plate, it's maxed out. That plate is stuck That's below it. where we believe it would be ideal to, yeah. uh, to run it. Okay. So if that's the intent, well, that's perfect. Do we think it's functional? It's functional. Is it ideal? No, no, it's not ideal. I'd take it over nothing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, running around with my water rings and floaties, I would rather have this vest. Um, For sure. Absolutely. Now we get to say on our side that, hey, I'd rather run this or this because we can choose. But this one here, that is where we would definitely be leaning towards is mm, not for me. Right. It's not a bad vest. It's no, just it's that not. That one issue for me is. Right. And I, for me, that's a pretty critical issue. There's, there's lots of, uh, lots of other things you can do with this vest. Like there's a great map pocket here in the front, um, that uses the Velcro and a button. Uh, and it's, it's quite, quite wide. Uh, but when I was out running with this and rocking with it, I kept, a cell phone in there. I opened it up. I stuck a bottle of water in there. Yeah, it, it's so got it's, some room to it. It's got some room to it. Very, it's very much so. The the shoulder uh, pads that are on the shoulder are removable. Uh, they're a great feature. Uh, this is, these are the pads that you can uh, you can get from Condor. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Ripple Industry, if it's sold by Condor, Ripple Industry can yes. get it. Yes. Yeah. Um, That's correct. And then the drag handle, the rescue handle that's on the back. That is fantastic. I took this plate carrier because uh, I didn't have anybody drag me across uh, across my yard, but uh, we're gonna do that one of these. Days. Oh, we're gonna do yeah, we're that. Is an actual episode coming of yeah. the drag handle challenge. We we can we can definitely do that. We possibly. have some strong men lined up to do that with us. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. But 
I didn't see any uh, any stress points in the stitch. No, the, the, it the, stitched really well. This one is a solid stitching yeah. of, of that drag handle. It really is. And when we look into it, it's got a little bit of an admin pouch back there kind of yeah. thing, as well on your back. Um, I've seen radios wired through there. Yes. I've seen various things. Yeah. Uh, just remember though, if you do put something in there and you throw a ruck on, on top of this vest, that's going to be a pressure point in the base of your neck. Mm -hmm. So yes, again, with the drag handle, I was out throwing it around, doing flips and stuff, treating it like it was a, a sandbag, um, doing some crazy shit. This vest has good points. It really does. Yeah. And the one feature that we don't um, appreciate enough out of it is the plate location. Yeah, um, I agree. The rest of it, solid construction, construction yeah. just what you're expecting from Condor. And uh, thank you, Tom, for uh, hooking us up with this. And uh, Javi was the one that uh, decided to send this one to me. So thanks, Javi. We talked about the vest. Yeah. Now we follow the flow of the show. Right. What's next to talk about? Next, we're going to talk about some training. Yes. So tonight's training. Okay. Tonight's training. Uh, well, I'm going to let you lead into it. Okay. Since you set it up and. <laughs> We're running the show. Well, yeah. Uh, so tonight's training was about uh, the warm up. Was four circles. We started with some precision. Get everybody's head into that, and the four circles had black lines at random ish locations, or not locations, but across them. Okay, different directions, and it wasn't quite supposed to be randomized. It was randomized by the artist. A fantastic artwork too. By it was. They they Shout actually up their game. The so. Most of our targets are hand drawn for these trainers. Follow the Instagram and stuff to, to learn more. So we started with the precision, five rounds of precision, That's just right. to see what our group gonna look like. Yeah. Okay. It's pertinent because we're gonna come back to that. So that was the first circle. Second circle was um, a little bit of rhythmic, okay, and drawing. And then we did the second or the third circle, rhythmic, bam bam or pow pow or pew pew as the vernacular was different. Everybody that's, hears it a little differently. That's right. So then we left the fourth circle, dropped to the larger circles for some speed. Yeah. We upped our speed. It was kind that's of like right. we were working on um, a little bit of distance tonight. Okay. Right, we, we did. We definitely pushed it to, uh, to distance once we got down to the A zone sizes. Yes, the A zone sizes. So we went from the circles of uh, precision and speed and we kind of combined the two and found our rhythmic pattern of what we can continually achieve instead of just trying to be fast all the time. Right. What do you think of that? I thought it was great. And I tell you why I thought it was great. Um, people hit a point in their training where they want to go faster. They want to do cool stuff. They, their confidence level builds. Yep. But confidence is a very fragile thing. And you can destroy confidence very quickly. So I think it is very important to, uh, at the beginning of every training session, to just knock off the dust um, and to do the precision stuff. Because a slow, I'm going back to a term that I was that I was taught in the Army, a slow hit is better than a fast miss. Um, yeah. So taking those uh, two, three inch circles that were divided mm -hmm. to, to mess with your focus a little bit uh, and working on the precision on them assisted you. Because then when you move down to the six inch circles, and we started picking up the speed and coming out of the holster, um, you, you, you're you starting to think about more of those smaller circles with the precision. It was out of the holster from yes. the ready, driving out, uh, making sure that you have proper sight alignment, proper grip, trigger control, uh, and squeezing those shots off and trying to be as accurate as possible. Yes. So when you go faster, you're gonna, you're gonna um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're gonna sacrifice some some accuracy. Yes. But it shouldn't be to the point or to the detriment of uh, of being a miss. No. no. So you moving, want to find that finite point. Right. Moving from the two inch circle to the six inch circle was a great transition to start picking up the pace. And then when we move to for anybody who's watching this in the U.S., our IPSCA zones are a little bit different here in Canada. Um, then they may be uh, down in the states. So you use more of the IDPA targets uh, up here because I think they're trying to get IPSC in the Olympics. It's it's a headless target. So the A zone is kind of shaped like a coffin, an upside down coffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Is. Yeah. Uh, so moving from those six inch circles to the A zones, uh, so you start transitioning between your targets 
is just bringing in another facet. Yes. And this is this is all building up to a dynamic situation, a dynamic mm-hmm. shooting situation. Whether it be your sports shooter um, or you're an armed professional, um, a few professional, uh, then it's got an application for you. Oh yes. Because you're you're going you're taking that accuracy, speeding it up until you hit a point where you're starting to lose your accuracy, and then dial it back down. And that's that's what the intent of the practice tonight was was to get to that point where you can consistently perform the same speed and accuracy until you can't fuck it up and then add the speed again. So we went from that, went to the, uh, the upside down tombstones, which I think I'm, from now on my targets are going to turn it the other way around because they actually... So they look like actual coffins. And, well, and they also are the silhouette, basically, of the shape True. of a... Uh, shit. What's that one from Battlestar? What were they called, the bad guys? The Cylons. There you go. They look like a Cylon. So we're going to take a start fighting Cylons here. Everybody wants to start fighting Cylons. Okay. You never know what's out there. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> not going to go down that rabbit hole. So... The intent was that, and then we pushed out with the bottom two targets to see if you could actually right. hit. Right. Um, and that was a free, you know, fun thing. And then we brought everything back in, and we finished on the last uh, three-inch circle with precision. And one thing I want to point out, and I don't know if you noticed it or not, but everybody had a tighter grouping with that precision at the end of the night. Absolutely. I think it's really important to always finish a training session um, on a successful note. Anybody out there who's who's a dog trainer, horse trainer, um, I've had experience in both of those fields, so that's why I revert back to that. But um, you, no matter where your training session goes, you always have to finish that training session yeah. on a positive, so that you leave there with confidence. You don't leave destroyed. You don't leave feeling like you've accomplished nothing in that training session. And tonight, <clears throat> I have to point out that we didn't use as many rounds tonight as we typically use in our training sessions. Tonight we went through. Uh, 100 rounds of nine millimeter. That was it. In two hours. In two hours. And that was, we had 10 shooters. Yeah. I think 10 shooters. Yeah. Um, so 100 rounds isn't ridiculous. Um, we. Um, For American followers, that's $100. Uh, yeah, I'm not here yet. <laughs> yes. Um, but I, I think it was good. And it, it articulates to people and shows people that you don't have to go to the range and blast off 250 rounds, 500 rounds, 1,000 rounds in a training session. If you're putting 50 rounds down range a week, you're doing better than the next guy. Oh, yeah. And as long as there's a purpose to those 50 rounds, you're exactly. not just doing like, okay, there's a target, the bat, the bat. We can quantify our training tonight 100-fold because we went from people having a grouping with inside that three inches-ish to having that grouping at the end inside the half of the three inch circle. Yeah, which and, is fantastic. And that, that right there just blew my mind uh, yeah. because you know I'm awesome as a trainer. <laughs> so the training aspect of it, the gear aspect of it, the the way this works, Chris, is that we talk about things that we like and enjoy. Yeah. And the training aspect is great, but the social aspect, I want to touch on that right now because the world is going oh, through a, a bit of a, um, I want dumpster to say- Dumpster fire? Dumpster fire. Not just the dumpster. The whole dump is on fire. You're right. Okay? The tire fire in, in Springfield that's burned and burning for 25 years yeah. is, is spread. So with that said, when you join a range or facility, um, you want to join one that has a good essence to it. Yeah. And we've had, I think we've had up to 20 shooters um, was our most at one time. I think so. And that's yeah. still following all... You know guidelines and recommendations and, and anti health, uh, anti social stuff. Mm-hmm. But the aspect of it is that it's a community where everybody shows up. That we have people that didn't even shoot tonight. Yeah, that's that, right. That just showed up to be around and watch and talk and hang out. And to me, that's what the shooting community should be. Is about that uh, inclusiveness. Yes. Nobody gets a, a participation award. Okay. No. Don't get me wrong. It's about being part of something that you feel is bigger than yourself. Does yeah. that make sense? I think so. And I think it, it teaches you to uh, be humble and accept criticism. By criticism, I mean ridicule. So once you're comfortable in that community, it's it's well established that um, once you are comfortable and you are a part of that community, it goes from helpful hints to complete ridicule because we start to, we start to appreciate that. And it's kind of, 
anybody who's been a part of a sports team, it's, it's a lot like that, where you, you start picking on your buddies because you like them. And, and for me, I'm trying to train everybody up to a level where I'm not training anymore, that I can, I can ridicule them and they can ridicule me back. Right. And hopefully someday, that young fellow by the name of Kevin or Kyle, whatever he goes by, will get to that level uh, someday. I think hell of a note taker, by the way. My goodness, he's always taker. writing that note. So <laughs> on that note, uh, thank you for tuning in. Please tell your friends or be a kit whore and keep it to yourself. Can I point out one more thing? Oh, yes, absolutely. This wasn't planned. No, it wasn't. We did not coordinate this by This was no an means. accident. <laughs> the little plaid was an accident. This is literally the only plaid shirt that I still wear. We or may start calling this the uniform, though. It may be. Yeah. Um, so, ladies, if you have some plaid recommendations for us, uh, definitely send us the links. Or go on our Amazon wish list and send them to us. <laughs> we don't even have that yet. <laughs> Guys, you're welcome to send us plaid, too, or Absolutely. Hawaiian shirts. Yeah. We're, we're not uh, judgmental here. We are supportive of the community. We want to see more people out there shooting. Absolutely. And at the end of the day... Chris and I are very adamant about our service to our country, those that serve, those that are first line responders, and anybody else that puts themselves in the way of danger for somebody else. We appreciate you, and this show is not for you, it's not about you, but it's something you can watch and enjoy. Absolutely. You like if that? it made you laugh, then we've done our job. Oh, is this supposed to be funny? I mean, some of the stuff we do is... On, on other formats. So, yeah. yes, thank you for tuning in. Chris, anything to say before we go? Uh, no, who's going to wake Kyle or Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, It's been great. We appreciate absolutely everyone. And we'll see you next time.